Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight we are going to delve into Florida Horror Stories. I hope you guys enjoy these stories. I am always fascinated by Florida. There's always so much to delve into there in a number of senses, but these paranormal stories are pretty creepy, so I hope you guys enjoy. Also, there are a few days left through the end of August of the enamel pin sale, 60% off with code SUMMER60 in the shop. Links are below and up in your information card to your top right. Also, there are a few new designs on Teespring, I believe, and some other places, so all the links to all of that will be down in the video description below. Without further ado, be sure to subscribe and toll the bell and hit all notifications so you never miss an opportunity to join us whenever we venture into the darkness. And now you know what time it is. It's time to grab your gear, get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. This happened when my boyfriend and I went to Florida, specifically Miami, for our winter break. This was literally right before the pandemic hit America. Most news was still about China, so we were still allowed to travel. We were having dinner at this barbecue place that we found while we were driving around. We couldn't decide what to eat, so we just agreed to stop at the next place we drove past. Neither of us can even recall the name of the place, and the food was meh. Anyway, we were finishing up and the waitress comes and passes us the bill. Like, okay, that's normal. The thing is, both my boyfriend and I was so sure that he had picked up the bill, slid his credit card there, and left it on the table. Like, it happened so naturally. It was such a routine thing to do, we weren't paying attention, but I could have sworn that I saw him take the check. So then comes a random waiter who didn't serve us at all that night and picks up the bill. Then the original waitress who had served us comes back two minutes later and tells us we forgot the card. Inside the book thing that they give back to you, there was nothing. When my boyfriend checked his wallet, the card was gone. We were so dumbfounded. The next 10 minutes, my boyfriend and the staff were searching for this card, which was nowhere to be found. And mind you, our table was like less than 10 feet away. Anyone would have noticed a card dropping on the floor. The waiters and waitresses swore that it was empty from the second they picked up this checkbook thing. Even if they wanted to steal it, why would they take that risk? It makes no sense. And my boyfriend even waited a day to see if there was any activity on his card, but there was nothing. He canceled it later. What's weird is that we also couldn't remember who the waitress or waiter was that was involved with the bill, even right after it happened. The whole thing was just so weird. And honestly, we never even saw that second waiter again. I'm not sure if it was a glitch or what, but it was just strange. It was senior year of college, and my best friend and I were driving south to meet a friend in Florida. We were on a small back road, about 40 minutes or so out of one small town and about 40 minutes away from the next. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there's this deep fog. I had to turn on the windshield wipers to continue to see the road. I looked down briefly to adjust the wipers, and when I looked up, out of nowhere, there was a man standing halfway into the road. He was unlike anything or anyone I have ever seen. White skin, white hair, white clothing, and no shoes. He had his arm out signaling for a ride, and he didn't flinch when our vehicle went by. Worst of all, he had these glowing white eyes. Now, I've seen plenty of animal eyes glow, dogs, cats, you name it. 
but I've never seen a pair of human eyes reflect the light like that. It was unnerving. Anyway, I swerved out of the way, laid on the gas, and kept going. My friend and I were both quiet for a moment, and then she turns to me and says, Did you see him too? And I said, Yes. She paused and asked, And the eyes, I'm not crazy. They were glowing, right? I assured her that I saw the same thing. We haven't spoken about it since. To this day, I think about the man with the glowing eyes. Where did he come from? What did he want? And worst of all, what would have happened if we had actually stopped or crashed while swerving to avoid hitting him? All my life, my mom has always unwillingly been a magnet for paranormal activity. She never spoke of it. She thought of it as a curse that plagued her. Once at around two in the morning, I found her sitting at the dining room table sitting stock still, smoking cigarette after cigarette, staring into the living room with all the lights off. The cigarette smoke was settling at about the halfway point in the room so it looked like a low, stagnant cloud, adding to the suddenly alarming feeling of the space. I called out to her, but she didn't respond. She just sat there, the ember of the Marlboro brightening with every drag. You could hear the crisp sound of the burning tobacco as she inhaled. I just stood there, arms crossed, chilled from the night air, looking at her in confusion. N mom Mom, are you okay? She just sat there, silent, stoic, staring at nothing. Another drag. And then, finally, she said something. They just walk through. They, they just walk through here. I don't know where they're going. I scanned the room, goosebumps shivering up my arms. Who, Mom? Who walks through? Nothing. I was young and fairly creeped out, so I just backed up slowly and quietly went back to bed, closing and locking my bedroom door. The next morning, I asked her what that was all about, and she acted like it was nothing. Like I'd had some bad dream and thought it was real. She completely played it off like I was the crazy one to think that she would ever do something like that. And then she said, you know I quit smoking six months ago. Stuff like that happened all the time. These little incidents that she was part of but would never acknowledge after they happened. I know she had some gift or power or something, but she never actually told me about it. I think because she hoped whatever it was wouldn't find an attachment to her sons. It did anyway. It was my first year back from college. I was asleep in my bed, briefs only, the morning sunlight streaming into my room and waking me from my dreams. It was warm and bright. I can still feel the way the sun felt on my skin that morning as I lay on my stomach, blankets thrown asunder by the vigorous sleeper that I was. The day was going to be beautiful, and I was thinking about what I'd do first after breakfast. I was facing the wall opposite the doorway of my room, staring at the cocoon movie poster that I loved so much, when I heard my bedroom door creak open. Mom checking on me before she headed to work. Only, suddenly, something felt off. I could hear the door opening. I knew the sound of that door as well as I knew every creak and groan of the house that I'd grown up in. I knew what it sounded like when it was opened all the way, but... It didn't open all the way. It stopped suddenly. It was like the minute that I recognized something was off, the door just stopped moving. Like lightning, a wave of terror rushed through my body, washing through me like an icy wave. I was fully awake instantly and paralyzed with fear. Completely paralyzed. It wasn't my mom. I knew it. Whatever it was, it was not my mom. I couldn't move, I couldn't yell, I just lay there, completely terrified. 
Then it started moving toward me. I could hear the steps on the carpet. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it would burst. I was so scared that tears started streaming from my eyes. I could feel it stop, hovering over me, looking down. I kept praying that it wouldn't touch me. Please don't touch me. I could feel it reaching out, its arms extending, moving to rest a hand on the small of my back. I managed to close my eyes and decided that I was not going to let this happen. I was going to count to three and gather all of my strength and jump up and scream. I was going to break this paralysis. As I made this decision, I felt the arm stop. It stopped right over my body. I felt the presence freeze. So I gathered all my energy and I tried to count to three and move, but I was still so scared that nothing happened. I barely moved an inch. I closed my eyes again and focused harder than I ever have on anything in my life and managed to roll myself off the bed and squeak out a meager yelp. It was enough though. I hit the ground hard, breathing heavily and sweating from either fear or the suddenly hot sunlight streaming through my window. My bedroom door was closed. There was nothing around me. The presence was gone. I threw open the door and ran up the stairs to the living room where my mom was getting ready to go to work. You're up. I was just about to go down there and say good morning. Bright, cheery, like nothing had happened. You weren't just in my room, checking on me or something? I said, wiping sweat from my forehead, completely confused. She gave me an odd look. No, and for God's sake, put some clothes on. I'll see you tonight. After that, she was gone. That was the first time. But since then, it's followed me everywhere I go. I don't feel it all the time. Sometimes years go by, but it always comes back. I don't know if I will ever find out what it is. My mom passed two years ago. With her gone, I can only hope that she tries to protect me from whatever this is. This isn't the only experience I've had either. It's just the one that profoundly affected me. At first I thought it was a sleep issue, but the problem is, I was awake the whole time. I remember seeing the wall, the poster, the bright room, feeling the sheets beneath me, the smell of the fabric softener. I'm no fool. The first thought I had was that it was a dream, but I was going through the logic of what was happening to me and I knew that it wasn't. That coupled with our family's history, my mom's experiences, my experiences, I knew something was happening. We traveled everywhere, all over the world and the country. I think we picked up something, somewhere, and I think my mom knew it. This wasn't the first thing that happened, it was just the biggest. One day, I'll tell you about our house on Park Place in Florida. That is where I began to think that my mom had secrets she didn't want to share. But I guess some secrets I'll never know. I was in Florida for a high school marching band trip. This was about three to four years ago. We were to march in the Disney parade as the marching band, so we got to spend time in Florida and we went to all the theme parks, including Universal. One day when we were in Clearwater, this event occurred. Three guys who were a part of my group and I were chilling on the beach, far away from most other people. All of a sudden, I heard a really dark, deep voice say, no. It wasn't like a yell, so it didn't make me look around or anything. In fact, it almost felt more like a thought in my mind, but it was very clear and distinct. I was kind of shook for a second, but I didn't really want to mention anything to the guys I was with. 
After about a minute, one of them asked, Did you guys hear that? Instantly, I asked, The no? Everybody had heard that exact same no with a deep male voice. It sounded very close, as I said, basically like a thought. And again, the nearest people were easily 60 feet away, and it was a mom and her kids. As a sound engineer, I can confidently say that a man with a deep voice couldn't say a soft no loud enough from over a hundred feet away to make it feel like it was inside our very heads, especially with all the chatter from everybody else on the beach and the sounds of the ocean muffling it. That's it though. Nothing else happened, so I mean, it's not a super interesting story, but I 100% believe that there's something out there now. I just don't know what it is. I've worked in multiple prisons. Due to privacy reasons, I won't name them. I wasn't at this particular prison for very long, and due to the notoriety of this specific inmate, it will give away that prison's location, but that's fine. I worked in the prison that holds Florida's death row at one point in my career, before transferring to a prison that was a lot closer to home. Due to the fact that I am a woman, they really didn't want me on the row unless it was for training. I was training, and during my training I was given a tour of the row and the death chamber. Our death chamber is comprised of two rooms. One holds our gurney for lethal injection, and one holds our electric chair. I wasn't technically working on the row, but we did have an inmate who was on death watch, and there needed to be an officer in there 24-7. Death watch is where the inmate is moved to the final holding cell until the execution, where they receive their last meal and everything like that. An officer came to relieve me for a 15 minute break, and due to the size of this prison, I couldn't walk out and have a cigarette in time. I decided to explore a little bit on my break out of morbid curiosity. I walked into the room with the gurney and saw it from the window, and felt my heart sink, knowing that the inmate that I was watching over would be strapped down to it in just a few hours. He ended up getting a stay of execution, however, so that never ended up happening. I ended up finding myself in the room with the chair, and when I did, something felt really off. I felt a mix of feelings, despair, anxiety, my mind was racing. I felt uneasy, and I turned to leave the room when I heard, you didn't think I would be back, huh? I felt like I was in an arctic tundra. I began to shiver. My spine was tingling. I was frozen in fear because I knew that I had entered that chamber alone. I forced myself to turn around I had my pepper spray in my hand just in case I ran into an inmate that had somehow escaped from the row. I did run into an inmate, but definitely not the one that I was expecting to. I was staring dead into the face of Ted Bundy, sitting in the chair that he died in. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. My heart was racing and I felt like fainting. I began to back away slowly. It was like he was alive. He wasn't see-through. It was like he was really there. The only way that I would have ever known this was an apparition was because that I knew that he'd been executed in the 80s. But still frozen in fear, I watched what appeared to be an alive and solid Ted Bundy disappear like he'd never been there in the first place. I got the hell out of there and was pretty much unable to speak to anybody for the rest of the day. When my husband and I lived in Florida, we bought a cute little three-bedroom, two-bath ranch-style home as our first home. It wasn't huge, but it suited us just fine. 
we built a huge organic garden that took up about a fourth of the backyard. There was no indication of any presence in the house, at first. Over time, however, I started to notice little things that slowly turned into bigger things that I couldn't ignore. There were two smaller bedrooms on one side of the house, and those were our son's rooms. The front room was our younger son's room, and the back room was our older son's room. He was about three when we bought the house. That back bedroom always had a strange feeling about it. I wrote it off as me just being weird when we initially moved in. I distinctly remember having the thought that I was glad I didn't have to sleep in there, and that my son was so young that maybe he wouldn't be bothered by it. Wrong. When our son was about four, he asked me if God wakes us up in the morning. I told him, not physically, but metaphorically, yes. Of course, I explained this in four-year-old terms. He said that he wanted to know if God actually wakes us up in the morning. I said, what do you mean by wakes us up? My four-year-old son said that somebody tickles his feet in the morning to wake him up. What? It was tough, but I tried not to react in front of him. I told him God doesn't usually do that, and I moved on. Thankfully, he didn't ask about it again. There were a lot of nights before my third son was born when my oldest would come into our room saying that he was scared and couldn't sleep in his room. He would sometimes sneak into our room and use his pillow and blanket to sleep on the floor beside our bed without waking us. Generally speaking, he never really did like his room. There was even a time, out of a need for sleep, that I told him to sleep in our bed and I would try to sleep in his bed. I actually couldn't do it. It felt like somebody else was in the room with me the whole time and I couldn't fall asleep. After that, I was much more lenient about him sleeping in our room. He was very relieved when we had our third son and made that room the nursery. We put bunk beds in the front bedroom and put the two older boys in there. Now that the back bedroom was the nursery, that meant that I had to go in there several times throughout the night to nurse my infant son. I was not thrilled with that idea, but having my other sons in the front bedroom immediately put a stop to my son waking us up in the night because he was afraid. That was helpful since the new baby was already keeping me up with feedings. The feeling of never being alone and always feeling watched prevailed. It never seemed to affect the baby though. He slept a typical infant schedule. However, I dreaded his nightly feedings. As soon as I stepped out of my bedroom, I felt that someone else was there. Once I entered the nursery, the air actually felt heavy. It was as if the atmosphere in that room was thicker. I couldn't really distinguish it. It felt like dark energy. It just felt different from the rest of the house. There were nights when I would constantly look around the room, half expecting to see someone looking back at me. The feeling of being watched was so tangible that it often gave me goosebumps. Then, it all came to a head during a typical feeding one night. My baby was probably about four months old or so and woke up at about 3 a.m. Pretty normal for him. As I sleepily stepped out of my bedroom, I saw a black figure in the shape of a man sitting on my couch. The features were definitely the build of a man, but perfectly jet black. I couldn't see any defining features like eyes or a mouth or hair, just the outline of a man that was solid black. As soon as I saw him, he stood up from the couch and disappeared. It was so fast. I stood in the doorway of my bedroom, trying to figure out if I'd really seen what I saw. I can still see it in my mind's eye to this day. It was definitely up there with some of the coolest paranormal experiences I've ever had. Of course, my immediate problem was that I had to walk right past my couch and into the nursery to nurse my son. I'm sure I don't have to tell you how much I didn't want to do that in that moment. But he was crying, and I suddenly wasn't sure if he wanted to be fed, or if something had woken him up and messed with him. 
I rushed in to find him doing this typical hungry cry. He was such a cute little baby boy. He's almost 11 now. I miss those days. Anyway, I got sidetracked. I scooped him up and nursed him, all the while looking around the room and listening intently for anything that didn't sound normal. I felt creeped out and didn't feel alone, but we got through the feeding without further incident. The feelings of being watched and never feeling alone continued until he was sleeping through the night. Thankfully, he never seemed affected by it and stayed in that room until we moved when he was three and a half years old. My feeling of unease while in that room remained throughout the entire decade that we lived there. The second time I saw a shadow figure in that house happened about two and a half years after the first time. It was the middle of the night and I guess my husband couldn't sleep. He'd gotten out of bed and gone to the living room to read. I woke and opened my eyes to see a male figure standing on the other side of my bedroom, facing me. He was mostly black, but I could see that he was wearing cloth pants, kind of like khakis, and a short-sleeved, checkered-type shirt. My grandfather had just passed away a couple of months before this, so at first I thought it was him, because those are the typical types of clothes that he would wear. I mean, who knows, maybe it was. He has visited my dreams since then. I looked down to where my husband should have been laying and put my hand there in order to wake him to tell him to look, only to realize that he wasn't there. As soon as I looked back up, the figure turned toward the little door to our back porch, took one step, and disappeared into the door. The whole thing was over in just a moment. After a minute of coming to terms with what I'd just seen, I went quickly into the living room and told my husband what had happened, still convinced that it was my grandpa. He, of course, said that it was a dream and told me to go back to bed. I find it interesting that the figure showed up the one night that my husband was not in the room with me. I do not think that that was a coincidence. There have been other strange things that have happened in the home, too. We had a dog that would bark at our closet in our bedroom for no apparent reason. I don't mean she would bark in a friendly way either. This was the danger I don't recognize this person bark and growl. I was actually kind of thankful when we moved, although the house was perfect in every other way. I still miss our huge organic garden. We went back there a couple of years later and met the family that bought the place. I casually asked how they liked it and if anything strange had ever happened there. Anyone who has ever seen a scary movie would have asked a million questions at that point. They simply said nothing ever had and moved on in the conversation. I left them with my email address, but I've never heard from them since. I assume they're doing fine and are comfortable in the home. As I have said before, these energies tend to find me. It's possible that whatever was there when we moved out, left. I didn't have any major experiences beyond a few whispers in our rental house before we bought the home we're in now. We've lived here for over three years and have started having some interesting things happen here now. I'm sure that means I'll have more stories to tell in the future. I was working as a correctional officer in the state of Florida. I have a ton of stories, but I just want to tell one this time. I'll start with my first experience ever in the prison. It was my first week, probably my third day on the compound. We have to count inmates, so I was working a 16-hour shift. During the night shift, there's nothing to do. So we count the inmates who were locked in cells hourly. It was the 2 a.m. count and I was in a tea dorm. Tea dorms, obviously by the name, are shaped like a tea. There are two stories and I was on the second story on the right side of the wing. The very first cell that I went up to, an older white inmate had his face against the glass. Inmates like to gun officers. I'll let you figure out what that means, but I wouldn't Google it. 
and I had been gunned quite a few times in the short amount of time that I had been there. Being gunned was something I didn't tolerate, so I told this inmate that he needed to be back in his bunk by the time I came back from counting the rest of the wing, or I'd make sure to throw the handcuffs on him. He didn't say anything. I wrote down the cell number and continued my count. It was the first cell on the wing, so I wouldn't have forgotten which cell it was anyway. I continued my count and went back to that cell to make sure that this inmate was back in his bunk. After shining my flashlight in the room, I counted two inmates, but these inmates were neither old nor white. I obviously freaked out, and I told the officer in the station once I got back. This officer told me that the guy's name is Kevin and he does this all the time. I explained that this guy was white and that neither of the guys in the cell were, so what gives? He said, oh, well, Kevin's dead. I actually found him after he smoked himself to death on K2 mixed with rat poison three months before you got here, actually. Prisons are not silent places, and I have a ton of stories, but that one was my first hell of an introduction. This was told to me by my friend who lives in Florida. One of the reasons I believe him is because I stayed at his house and observed what seemed to be paranormal activity. My friend is an artist, and before getting a studio, he would do his art in a very old warehouse. Keep in mind, he has OCD and is very specific with how he sets everything up. On more than one occasion, his work mostly statues which weigh enough for it to take a large amount of time to carry, would end up on the complete opposite end of the table when he knows that's not where it was. There's also a room in there. It's said that a lady died in that room and the door to that room is never opened. He said that a few times he would walk by and the door was open and the light was turned on when he knows that it was definitely shut and off when he last looked. He said that all of these things happened at around 3 a.m. I know that that's kind of cliche, but I believe him. Maybe it's cliche because it's true. The incident that finally convinced him to get out of there was when he was packing up to leave one day. As soon as his last piece of art touched the trailer, the building made a sound as though the entire roof had collapsed. When he turned around, everything was fine. He never went back after that. 